Uh, hello, Peter. Uh, good morning, Vincentas. Uh, good morning. It's really morning, despite that we have one hour difference between Lithuania and Hungary. In Lithuania, we have uh, 10, 10, 18 at the moment, and one one hour before in uh, in Hungary. But never mind. It's uh, in any case, it's morning, uh, and uh, it's really nice that we have you today uh, for our online discussion. Uh, we continue this tradition to have some discussions with colleagues from different countries and to to, to discuss about uh, some important relevant uh, things, relevant aspects related to education and some educational issues. And today we have um, uh, Professor uh, Peter Cortese, or Cortese, if you are pronouncing well, uh, from uh, University of Misko of Miskolc in Hungary. And uh, we are going to discuss uh, the latest insights, ideas, and perspectives related to education system in in your country, and uh, possible uh, about some your uh, academic activities, about your university, and possible some other issues that uh, depends on time. And uh, as I already mentioned, uh, our colleague uh, Professor Peter is from uh, Hungary, from University of Miskolc. And he is a mathematician, as far as I know, a good mathematician and uh, uh, skills uh, with quite uh, wild and large uh, skills and expertise area in mathematics, in algebra, in mathematical concepts, uh, linear algebra, pure mathematics, etc., etc. I am not a mathematician, so I'm not going into details. Possible Peter will introduce him, um, uh, himself, uh, etc. But um, as far as I know, Peter also uh, somehow, at some extent, he is involved or connected with mathematics education, uh, obviously, and it's also important, important area uh, at our times, at least in Lithuania, we will discuss possible later. Uh, please, uh, Peter, uh, can you introduce shortly yourself and uh, to add something more? Thank you, Vincent. As, uh, I'm, uh... Uh, retired professor of the University of Miskolc, actually, but I am still active in organizing international relations uh, in a, a huge network. So that is my relation, actually. Uh, and indeed, uh, thank you for your uh, detailed uh, introduction. Uh, I am interested in, I have been teaching for more than 45 years uh, mathematics at different levels, but also other subjects and organizing this international network. I can mention that even during such an activity, we met with you in uh, the Shedlitz, if I pronounce uh, well, a nice conference on mathematics and education or education and mathematics. Uh, even several times we met. Uh, during yes, it, it was this, in Poland. Uh, it's it's really, really nice place. Siedlce, we pronounce Siedlce. Uh, uh, in Poland, it's Shedlice. really. Yeah. Shedlice. I try to pronounce it <laughs> correctly. So, uh, so, a few words about uh, my uh, university, because it's worth knowing that the University of Miskolc was the first European Technical University founded in technical sciences. It was uh, dated in 1735, so it's quite a long ago, and it was founded for uh, mining engineering especially uh, because of the former need to create uh, good engineers. And it's interesting how it relates to the Central European and generally European context we are just now. It was founded in Shelmetsbanya, we say it in Hungarian, but Slovak friends pronounce it Banska Szczyavnica. And the German uh, friends, Austrian friends say it uh, Szemlitz. So in our area, many of, of the cities have different names um, in different uh, languages. Anyhow, this School of Mining Engineering was founded 
and interesting to mention that that uh, that uh, historical uh, accreditation if i may use this word in such a, a long long time ago it was not called of course accreditation the condition was to have the five most popular uh, books in that science this was the founding of the university we started teaching in Banska Szczernica, Szelmetsbania, with eight students and three professors. Now, after the First World War, <clears throat> I, I will skip some, some steps in the history of the university. Um, in fact, in, in the 19th century, it has been introduced to teach in three languages, in uh, Hungarian, in uh, German and in Czech language. And this is why the university is somehow uh, continued by other universities, like uh, the university in Lemberg in, in uh, uh, Austria, also uh, the uh, a university in Czech Republic. So they they moved to Olomouc, they moved the, the, the Czech teaching part after some changes in the uh, last part of the uh, 19th century. After the First World War, Hungary has restricted its borders. You know history. I don't want to give more details. For economic reason, the border we had to protect is, became much, much shorter. And then the university has been moved to Sopron. Sopron is a very nice city close to the Austrian border. In between the two world wars, it existed there. It has been added a uh, faculty of Sylvie culture. And after the Second World War, it has been moved to Miskolc. Miskolc was a very old city for um, mining, for minerals, for metallurgy and for hard industry. So they did believe that this is the right place for the university. Since yeah, then, I, the university I have read, I have read on on uh, internet, post Wikipedia, just checked about uh, your city, and I realized that it's really in industrial, industrial city. Uh, yes, population, uh, uh, population. How big is it? Uh, population possible about one hundred sixty thousand. Something? No, no. Uh, it used to be a very strong industrial center, but uh, after the changes, it was based. Uh, the metallurgy here was based on, as in many places, on energy from the uh, bordering countries and coal from and minerals from the bordering countries. So it was a good thing. But we we. Uh, have to finish it became not rentable uh, the uh, hard industry the uh, siderurgy metallurgy uh, and uh, even mining had a delay a uh, 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 strong uh, change so uh, that time Mishkolc used to be over 200,000 210,000 inhabitants but to our luck, uh, the city escaped somehow, and now we are a, a strong university center. Our university has nine faculties. We introduced other sciences as law faculty, faculty of arts, faculty of music, mechanical engineering, informatics, and many. So we have now nine faculties. And uh, also the industry uh, is uh, developed uh, by the highway m3 is called the hungarian one of the hungarian highways which is very close to the city and we have an industrial area very well developed so our university was lucky to uh, adapt to the changes in in the economic early. now i i uh, uh, was uh, a subject of this transformation but you asked me about my educational activity, teaching activity, and I would like to mention a very interesting story, which might be of interest also for uh, our colleagues in, in uh, your country. Uh, we founded in, uh, back in 1991-92, uh, 
we founded a very uh, interesting circle for talented students from high school. It was functioning at the university, but the participants were the brilliant students from high schools surrounding the university. It was called, I try to translate to English the name, self-made mathematics was the title. But it could be self-made physics or anything else, because our idea was to ask colleagues working in different uh, uh, subjects, in different areas of mathematics, to present a, uh, an interesting idea, then give to the students the possibility to uh, collect materials, to uh, make a presentation, and they presented the detailed presentation of that subject to their colleagues. So we were only helping them to make this presentation. That's why it was the self-made mathematics <laughs> circles so, uh, which lasted so, for many so years. Interesting, so interesting concept, <laughs> self-made mathematics. <laughs> yes, and uh, we had a Step by step, we made it uh, just for fun. Which we found it with some colleagues just for fun to to keep uh, the interest for the university and for the students. But uh, it's interesting that uh, how the students, the participants, which were changing all the time because four years of college of a secondary school um, students, then they left for universities. Partly in our university, others went to to Budapest or other universities or even in the United States or, or wherever possible, in Germany, Magdeburg. But they also kept somehow the relation with our university due to this fact. But I wanted to mention from the part of the education, the point of view of education, that we observed that this way the students, both the presenter student and those who are just taking part at the lectures, both gain quite a lot. Because to organize the lecture in the sense that you speak to one of your uh, school uh, colleagues from uh, class team uh, colleagues, so the same age people, you have to formulate what you want to say in a different way not respecting all the rules of the scientific language and also the students captured more easy the idea because it was almost the same level i play football with with the guy who presented a, an interesting story in mathematics and step by step they they uh, involve with more people i remember that uh, preparing for Germany for Potsdam, a junior mathematical congress, but not only mathematics, could be anything else, that we had a girl who, uh, that time it was not so easy to make a PowerPoint presentation, we had slides on plastic, and uh, she did change one single geometric figure 17 different times, because she was not uh, self-content of, uh, so, uh, not uh, uh, accepting uh, her own presentation, said, I use better, bigger letters, I move a bit the figure, and so on, which was that time not so easy because I had to buy hundreds of slides which had to be printed and so on. So these were some interesting lectures for me from the activity. By by the way, we, we won with this team, there was a team of 10 students I, making a good book it, and in yeah. them we won the best presentation for the students not for me uh peter i just remember it from uh, yesterday because i i had uh, we started semester and we started some lectures because it's not so easy uh, uh yesterday i had first lecture in auditorium after three years pandemic time because <laughs> we worked uh, last year just online and uh, this semester, spring semester, we also continue mainly to work online, except some groups, um, mainly bachelor students, master students working online only. Uh, and uh, it was so, so somehow stressful, for example, after three years yesterday to, to start lecturing. But uh, never mind. I remember that, uh, I, I gave to students one example just, uh, just to refresh their minds. 
uh, and it's connected with mathematics. <laughs> um, I asked, um, for example, uh, you, uh, your colleague suggested uh, being in cafeteria or cafe uh, or pizza, pizzeria, suggested to order two pizzas, uh, 30 centimeters each diameter, 30 centimeters, you know. And, uh, but another colleague said, no, let's order uh, one pizza 45 centimeters diameter. Uh, and who is right? Which pizza is bigger? <laughs> Two pizzas of 30 or one of 45. I understand the problem. And what was the solution? <laughs> Students said, no, no, two, two pizzas is better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, maybe for the pizzas it's better because two pizzas you can order with different toppings and uh, then it's uh, something more amusing. Yes, right, but, 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 but having, in mind, uh, having in mind the question which is bigger. For, for yes, the same, yes, that is yeah, mathematical for same... formulation of the problem. <laughs> yeah. okay. Also, uh, just a last remark about this self-made mathematics. We had an excellent uh, student there. He won the International Mathematical Olympiads gold medal summer. And uh, we invited, of course, to this uh, circle to have a lecture. And he held a two hours lecture, very boring. Very boring. He, it was his first lecture. He did not understand that the 11th version of the solution is not interesting for those, uh, his colleagues. And there were over a hundred students watching him, but after two hours, the attention went down of the student. Then we discussed with the student, he was, why, why they did not understand me? And I said, because you have to prepare your lecture. The second lecture was brilliant. Now he is teaching in uh, America <laughs> and, uh, at the university. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, uh, amazing how the students can learn very easy, good things. Also, a side effect of this uh, circle was that I organize quite a lot of conferences, about 20, 29 I organize in this period, even more summer schools and so on, but only conferences. And these students were my helpers because I was not in a leading position like a rector or director of an institute. I had my circle. And uh, it's amazing how these students reacted and they became my former students organizing conferences. I go to Halle and the first is a PhD uh, uh, professor, so he said, oh, your student helped me a lot in organizing the conference. Very active in, in helping and organizing the conference because they had the experience. They they joined me in organizing this. Okay, so this is uh, an interesting topic related to the university teaching. And uh, we had uh, three main topics organized here. The first was the Junior Mathematical Congress. It uh, sounds a big name. What happened? After the political changes in the beginning of the uh, 90s, if you remember, broke the uh, Soviet system and, and uh, all these countries had access to go to uh, Western countries. In uh, 1992 was organized the first European Congress of Mathematics. Because up to then, the mathematicians said there is a Congress in West, there is a Congress in East, and uh, they had only the academicians could, could participate. And this Congress had a, a French Junior Mathematical Congress, Congrès de Mathematiques Junior. And they, they uh, made as a motto uh, the little fox of Exupéry and they transformed it. They had a very nice idea, invited all young people to the planet of mathematics. So they explored this idea. After four years, in every four years is such a junior mathematical congress, we organized it in Mishkos. There was a large French uh, team, about uh, 30, 35 students, their leader was a mathematician and poet. 
two hobbies, mathematician and poet. But is more interesting the reaction of the students. Our university is situated at the uh, in between the main city of Miskolc and the small spa here, Miskolc Club also. So we are out of the city. And during the evening, a small fox appeared. And then they said, okay, this is the relation. The fox was in Paris. The fox, fox is present. So ex Paris fox came again to greet us. The conference I mentioned that our team of young students uh, won the first prize for, for student presentations. It was in Potsdam. That was the third conference. <clears throat> Another topic which is more interesting for, for uh, university, for our university, there is a CEFI, this is again a French mosaic word, Société Européenne pour la Formation des Ingénieurs, that is the European Society for uh, the Engineering uh, Education. And this has a very active mathematics group and we organized a CEFI seminar here in Miskolc also. And this was the start point to create our network, Cyprus network. I will speak about if you are interested, uh, which uh, started with five countries and seven universities. Now we have 14 countries and 73 university partners. Okay, so it, uh, possible, it grew up. Uh, possible we will return back later to this. Uh, uh, at some extent, we already started to discuss about education, education system in Hungary. But uh, let's uh, focus on more on more detailed uh, panorama. And uh, uh, traditionally, it would be nice, obviously, to talk about education system in your country. Just general panorama. And uh, can you shortly describe what is um, uh, the education system in Hungary today, for example? Um, can you briefly describe it? Very briefly, I cannot exactly describe, but I will try. Yeah, you are a professor, uh, you, you should uh, be able to I will start. Uh, I will start from very far away. I uh, took part in Canada at a conference and the guy came to me and said, what an interesting idea, tell me more about the education system in Hungary. I was shocked. What What is his interest? He said, I am working in the United States uh, education secretary or something, I did not remember his position, but he said we analyzed the education systems and we took in account only one measure, how many Nobel Prize winners are the result of the education system in that country. And I have to declare that Hungary was leading that list. We have to be proud because uh, now with political under uh, informations, uh, Hungary is mentioned in, in many other aspects, but this is true. Uh, there is near Miskolc, a very interesting city that is more important for the, for the history. Maybe you heard about the Eger, Eger. If not, you heard about Eger. So Eger uh, was a small uh, fortress. And when the Ottoman Empire started to occupy Hungary back in 1552, 26, 52, they occupied Buda Castle, they won many big fortresses, castles, but they had to stop, they united, they had two big armies and they united under Eger and they said, oh, this small fortress we finish it in one, two days, and the attack was over 70, 70 days, so more than two months. It came winter, and the Turkish lost the battle. So Eger is a <coughs> good place uh, for Hungary. I mentioned very long, because in Eger there is a vocational school, which also is interesting for our university because we have many students for the electrical specialty of the mechanical engineering faculty. So Eger has a school. The name of the school is after Wigner. 
Eugen Jenő, we say in Hungarian. Wigner Jenő was one of the Hungarian Nobel Prize winners. And he visited, he was alive when he visited this school, named after him. It's unusual. And uh, they made up a small uh, park where statues of Hungarian origin Nobel Prize winners were elected. And uh, there, Wigner stood with his own statue and said, you will stay here and I will be passed away for many years. <laughs> so it's a very nice, interesting. If you go to Eger, visit not only the castle, the fortress, but even the Nobel Prize winners. So the, the, first, the one, one uh, measurement of the educational system was this. And I agree with that. But uh, we, we fight with many, many problems, as in many countries. During the CEFI conferences, uh, I mentioned CEFI seminars, we often analyze the teaching of mathematics in engineering uh, high schools, uh, universities, technical universities in all over Europe. And uh, the result is that the, not only mathematics, but the education is uh, fighting to solve this problem of, of uh, transition between the old way of teaching and new elements of teaching. And also uh, the Bologna changes affected quite a lot of this, uh, this uh, system. But I think we, we do not uh, discuss the Bologna system, the advantages or disadvantages of it, just the consequences uh, for our education. Now, you're asking me about the educational system in Hungary. We have, uh, uh, we call it college, uh, which is uh, the, uh, what is the expression, uh, theoretical uh, high schools, colleges, we call it in Hungary. But, uh, 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 Hungary. Peter, it, it's, uh, it would be nice to shortly clarify the terms, because sometimes, for example, college in Lithuania, it means it's element uh, or institution, a higher education higher. institution, uh, because we have been a tertiary education system consisted from colleges, it means non-university studies and universities with university studies, but it's tertiary ter or higher education level. Uh, when we're talking about secondary level, we have uh, so-called gymnasium and pro-gymnasium or lower secondary level and upper secondary schools. Uh, because, uh, for example, as you mentioned, this uh, high school, usually it's American term, and it means anyway secondary level, um, what is in Hungary. Yes, uh, we are also a bit confused with these uh, notations. I remember the right uh, expression in, in education literature is secondary grammar school is that theoretical school, which is sometimes gymnasium, liceum and other names. And indeed, college was used uh, in the past and actually for those schools which are somehow intermediary in between the baccalaureate and uh, uh, higher education system. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the history, there were very good schools which uh, attained this level of uh, so over the baccalaureate. They, they have been teaching subjects over. But to return to the Hungarian system, we have this uh, system of uh, secondary grammar schools. We have vocational schools, which are uh, very strong, sometimes even uh, stronger than, than other uh, even uh, grammar schools, because they, they offer beside the uh, baccalaureate, the exam, the final exam to enter the university, they also offer some uh, diploma, technician level diploma. So they are the vocational schools, most of them offer this program. As uh, another subject is that in Hungary, the uh, teaching, the elementary, secondary, lower secondary, upper secondary teaching is uh, 12 to 13 years. 13 in the case that they got an other diploma, like uh, electrician, technician, or engineering assistant or other level 
of, of uh, diploma beside the, the normal baccalaureate. Uh, the, uh, there are in Hungary all these kind of forms. So we have four elementary, then eight gymnasium type or uh, then there is also a system six plus six. Mm -hmm. There are other schools which teach six, so a bit enter the the uh, the upper the lower secondary level, and then it uh, uh, continue with other six. And there are also gymnasium with uh, eight, four plus eight, mm -hmm. and eight plus four. Mm -hmm. So all these uh, levels. I mentioned 13 years, but that is only for vocational schools. If you have another qualification, vocational qualification also. And uh, as far as I know, for example, mainly in Balkan region, like okay, like Slovenia, like Serbia, like like um, our countries, they usually are using this term elementary, elementary education, elementary level, and it, it means. Uh, at least uh, six or nine grades, uh, nine years. For example, in our understanding, this is again more or less American uh, term because elementary usually it's kindergarten level. Uh, in Lithuania, we use uh, not only Lithuania; it's also European Commission uh, officially use these terms: uh, uh, primary and secondary. And we have, for example, primary level or so-called primary school from first to fourth grade. It means four years. Uh, because in Lithuania we have usually four plus four plus four, four years primary school, four years pro gymnasium, and uh, plus um, additional four years gymnasium level. And uh, generally, all these schools it can be separated, separate schools. For example, in cities, uh, in, uh, outside cities, it can be only pro gymnasium or so called prolonged or long gymnasium, including primary gymnasium level and gymnasium level because it, it's understandable and the uh, primary level usually uh, students from six seven year old till till 10 11 years old and what is same it? is in hungary so mm -hmm. in hungary we have also all these all these forms and uh, in my opinion this is also has some advantages and disadvantages what do you want to speak about disadvantages more <laughs> or advantages <laughs> Okay, let's let's mention uh, some of them. Some advantages, some disadvantages. Shortly. Okay, so I see a good advantage that uh, students entering in this long period, where even twelve years they go to the same school, it is possible with primary or elementary, or the seven, six to six to ten years. Uh, age of, of the students uh, and go up to baccalaureate to the same school. This is some some uh, aspect. This could be an advantage because the student has a, a culture of that that school, that education form. Uh, it's it's uh, the, the teachers know uh, where to direct the students uh, according to the level, to the uh, aptitudes of the student. But uh, the disadvantage is that if uh, the family changes location, moves to another city, then the student has uh, some disadvantages because during this complicated system, and we had a, a large study with, with seven uh, partners from Bulgaria, from Romania, from Hungary. Of course, uh, uh, the leader was a Cyprus uh, partner. Also, we had from Italy, from France partners, and we tried to compare the teaching level in mathematics and we observed enormous differences. So some of them uh, did not teach that, but teach other things. So uh, in if in a country there is uh, this various system of education, uh, then it is uh, difficult for the students to change. Uh, their way, if they need to change, if they need to go to another school, and so on. So it's it's uh, this this problem I see as a disadvantage. Also, we have some uh, special uh, schools. Uh, sorry, I don't want to popularize them. Uh, working with different education programs, very limited, very 
closed educational systems. I would say one word, but it's not. There are several programs like Waldorf schools. They have good advantages, good results and so on. But I, I consider a disadvantage, but there is no possibility of transition. And in our times, our students will meet, go to another country to have partial studies or even finish the university. Then the system must be somehow at the same level, their knowledge, uh, what does it mean, uh, baccalaureate and so on. Uh, this is a, a disadvantage. I remember that uh, Uvi, and I met him uh, personally, he died about uh, 10, 15 years ago. Professor Uvi from uh, St. Andrews University uh, was uh, uh, in charge uh, for the United Kingdom to solve this problem, to make a, a kind of unification of the different education uh, uh, systems. Uh, his report was called Hoovi Report, that is uh, back in the years 90, he finished this, uh, this study. And the first thing was that um, uh, somehow must be a core curriculum. But you have to know that we fight for that core curriculum only for mathematics, for engineering, for technical, and we do not succeed to have a common point. We have some basis that this must be in mathematics, uh, but is is very difficult. And uh, in Hungary, we had very interesting, very good, uh, and I know more about the mathematics, uh, uh, manuals for schools, but sometimes the manual written for the seventh form was uh, not in contradiction, but not covering all the areas for the eighth form in another manual. And then the schools choose, we want this kind of manuals to use, we want that kind of manuals to use, because they said this is a good for education, for a big variety of education. That is true, because some ideas, some uh, presentation versions uh, could be more successful in a way or another but uh, if uh, you look to the other end when the student enters the university then you can find these differences uh, make a trouble at least for for mathematics Okay, uh, another question, because uh, I know uh, that it's it's possible to discuss in more details and it's really interesting, but anyway, uh, uh, in at least in Europe, uh, not only in Europe, uh, we know very well that we have some, some, let's say, core components of every education system, more or less the same. But on the other side, we have uh, some specificities, some, some, uh, some uh, not common things, for example, and this is the most interesting issue. Uh, for example, my next question is connected with school, uh, let's say, in possible context, because uh, as far as I know, Hungarian schools are too competition-centered, competition-centered. Is it true? Can you shortly comment on this? competition-centered, oriented to competition. Yes, yes, uh, this is true, This, is, but not competition-centered. We value quite a lot the competitions. It's not competition-centered. The, the best uh, gymnasium level students, but also there, there, is, there is competition, Olympiad for vocational schools in different uh, preparation systems. But it's it's interesting for the students. Uh, I I uh, would say uh, I just tell you two things that uh, hung Hungary and Romania they started the first uh, mathematics journal in Europe. The first was in 1894 in Hungary, Kema. The second was in 1896 in Romanian. Uh, mathematics journal. So, this is somehow a uh, culture in, in this uh, area. Bulgarian were also very good. And even, maybe you do not know, let me remember for a, a moment, I got a very sad news uh, yesterday evening. Uh, one of my very good friends, Joseph Pelikan, he was the 
advisory board uh, uh, president for the International Mathematical Olympiad. So uh, he told me quite a lot about the Mathematical Olympiads. The first three Mathematical Olympiads back in the uh, 50s, years 50, so 1951-52, was founded at the International Mathematical Olympiad by Romanian, Bulgarian mathematicians and uh, Hungarian mathematicians. And then now they have more than 150, 160 countries taking part. But there are quite a lot of uh, of different competitions. Even I could mention one, I don't know if this is an advertisement, negative or positive. We have uh, for schools uh, two type of, of very popular competitions, that is kangaroo, probably you know this, uh, in which one uh, 60,000 of, of students take part. And there is another one that has uh, a Turkish origin also organized throughout Europe at the same time. I do not remember its name, but uh, this is mass mass participation. So even in Kangaroo uh, or in the other uh, conference, there are quite a lot of countries involved and uh, they uh, like to have uh, lots of participants from each country. Our very good friend uh, Michael Lambrou from uh, uh, Crete University, he is organizing the uh, Kangaroo for Greek, uh, for Greece, for Greek competitors. And also another very good friend in uh, Olomouc, in Czech Republic, Olomouc University, Josef Molnar, he is organizing, he's a Czech Kangaroo. So I have Greek Kangaroo friend. <laughs> Okay. Also, this uh, this team of French uh, pupils came in here were kangaroo uh, competitors. So I, I think that the competition is is good for for students, but it's not uh, not compulsory. So it's good. And you, entering the universities now, the universities have uh, the right to decide that this kind of competition, the result, of course, the first two places, first ten places obtaining the results in such a competition is considered. Yeah. <clears throat> the mathematical competition is the Kemal. Kemal is the secondary school mathematical uh, journal available in, in about uh, 6,000, over 6,000, 7,000 prints for schools. And they organize a problem solving competition. And uh, hundreds of students take part and uh, many of the big mathematicians started in this Kemal competition. I mentioned only Paul Erdős. He was the traveling ambassador, the Hungarian traveling ambassador of mathematics. So okay. I... Uh, let's uh, let's uh, uh, focus a little bit on political <laughs> or somehow related to politics. Uh, it's not our, let's say, main focus, obviously, but anyway, it's interesting. Uh, for example, as far as I know, as, uh, because I have read many, many also papers and different sources, uh, so-called centralization and the politicization of curriculum, for example, in Hungary, uh, has a long history. And uh, as far as I know, in 2013, the uh, Fidesz government of Viktor Orban at that time centralized administration of all public schools uh, which uh, uh, were previously managed by the municipalities we know that for example in Lithuania also mainly schools are managed by municipalities and uh, what do you think on this issue is it uh, centralization or of what i uh, uh, used to say to my colleagues that if you see me involved in politics then stop me <laughs> but your question i don't want to avoid uh, in fact this is a, a very uh, interesting uh, uh, question and the reality has two sides like a coin it's depending on which side is if you toss a coin then which side is up uh, that that could be the actual political view. 
So, uh, the actual government uh, uh, has the idea to somehow organize these uh, levels of passing from one system to another in a decent way. I don't know if if uh, is a simple job. <clears throat> and uh, the former uh, government before Fidesz uh, had another view. They said uh, school teaching must be economically. Uh, if there is a rural school where only 25 pupils are, then let's move them to a bigger settlement, uh, finish this school, centralize somehow. But the problem was that uh, the local authorities were not uh, given the, the supporting uh, for these schools. And then they said, oh, what a good uh, problem that we closed some schools because now it's more, we do not have to pay three directors, only one, we do not have to, and so, so you know, this kind of view. <clears throat> the, there were different level of schools. There were, uh, uh, we have, uh, after the political changes, we have uh, many schools uh, supported by, by church. So Catholic church, uh, Calvinist church, uh, different uh, in, uh, in Hungary, the, uh, how it's called, the equality of, of uh, uh, religions has a big tradition. I do not know if you knew that the first in the history of the world was the Hungarian, the predecessor of the Hungarian parliament. That time it was called other. In the 18th, early 18th century has declared, not sorry, the 16th century has declared the equality of all religions that during the communist era was not quite so. There were some countries where there was only one leading religion. I don't want to say examples, but probably you know. In others, like under the Austrian Empire, Catholics were the leading uh, uh, religion and so on. I don't go in, in details. Now, uh, part of the schools is supported by by uh, churches, different religion churches. Others are so-called uh, uh, local authority supported schools and others are so-called state supported. And you know that if a local authority ran out of money, then had to decide, do I keep the school? Do I fire five professors uh, or I construct uh, something uh, a street or some so the money was uh, not so sure and this is the behind this centralization but i do not know more details i know that all changes have uh, opposers all the time so if you introduce some change in a way yes. then there are opposers uh, i mentioned the, the diversity of manuals before it was a real fight because there were even mathematicians but other scientists also this is the best manual. Then another opinion. No, that is bad, and so on. So okay. I think that this kind of centralization is welcome. That yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I did not make any investigation to compare. I know that the the teachers uh, and uh, this this system you mentioned also uh, created some difficulty because they said that. Uh, the teachers must uh, not finish their studies, they must undergo to periodical preparations. And if they meet some, some conditions, then they are promoted to higher level. And this is not, not, uh, not won the, the general interest, because teachers teaching for 30 years in a way, they did not want to have this kind of measuring Time. This this creates some some uh, climate which is not not uh, pleasant actually. 
for instance, the uh, actualities in the in the TV, you see that uh, uh, teachers are protesting uh, in the street. What is not the best thing that uh, that uh, uh, they involve also uh, students of lower age, so 12 years, uh, 13, 14, 15 years uh, pupils are involved. That is not the best thing, in my opinion. And um, just tell you a concrete example. This system of perfectioning of the teachers has introduced for all teachers to create a portfolio to have a CV that I studied, I learned, I have followed, and to offer an example of how my lectures are organized, so a portfolio in a larger sense. This was got an immense uh, uh, opposing from, from the part of those uh, colleagues who, didn't, who are not this competitive type of teaching. But in my opinion, this is somehow uh, a good thing. Even this project I mentioned with Cyprus, they had a, a module how to teach uh, the teachers, not only mathematics teachers, how to create a good portfolio because sometimes they change their job, go to another school, have other jobs, and it's good to have this these ideas of, of uh, competitiveness uh, alive, not to have experience. Okay. I, that uh, that was uh, one answer to your question. Okay, okay, Peter. I, this is uh, this is obviously obviously not so easy issue. It's so complex. Uh, for example, in Lithuania, so at least for last decade, and maybe longer, we're also experiencing some transition. For example, uh, in municipalities. I mean, we called it uh, optimization of school network or, or schools network uh, and some uh, uh, generate gymnasium and, for example, uh, mainly in countryside, some uh, not only also in cities, for example, uh, uh, let's say in Shaolé, uh, 20 or more years ago, just after 90s, uh doesn't matter i don't know in details but it were more than 20 secondary schools so-called secondary schools currently we have obviously system gymnasiums and pro gymnasium but some it was reduced the number of schools was reduced and this is uh, in whole Lithuania also and some uh, some previously individual schools now becoming like a division of for example bigger gymnasiums etc mainly in countryside and students uh, by let's say school bus, they are uh, uh, going every day to to, to bigger gymnasium, etc., etc. Uh, first of all, this is uh, based uh, or related with demographical situation because number of students decreasing, and also another another concern is how to assure. Uh, let's say good conditions, uh, including infrastructure, etc., etc. Uh, but uh, uh, what is related to previous question? Uh, it's because what does mean centralization? Centralization with, uh, generally connected with management issues. For example, despite that we optimizing, for example, in Lithuania schools schools school network, they uh, also uh, conti they belong to they continues to be managed by municipalities at municipality level. Uh, obviously, except except for example some private schools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, if I understood well, in Hungary, centralization uh, mainly connected with managerial issues, with management. Possible, it's it's not correct. Okay, let's let's continue uh, to, from this context. Just uh, just uh, the question um, we could call also optimization of the conditions, but okay. the thing <laughs> is that uh, uh, with this uh, transition. Uh, the schools, uh, this fear of disappearing a school has passed, but they need to respect some conditions which are not so easy. Yes, sure. And also this optimization could could also affect the fact that that uh, maybe maybe Lithuania is also the same, but I do not know. 
that step by step it was introduced that all the manuals are uh, free of charge for students. So from the first elementary class up to the baccalaureate, all books are free of charge. Uh, and then uh, they said by this optimization, uh, if you have, uh, say, 25 different type of manuals for mathematics for the ninth form, then it's better to have three and not 25. Yeah, right. And, and then they have chosen the most popular overused manuals. And this is not uh, good for some teachers who said that, oh, I like that 23rd one, which was somehow, but only two schools have used that manual. So this this is also related to optimization. Yeah, but, uh, but it's very yeah. difficult to just one one more and I let you. Very difficult to speak uh, about differences and to compare in different countries. This I realized in a selfie conference when we were discussing with colleagues from Finland and uh, Sweden, Norway, and there was present also a very good colleague from uh, from uh, Prague and also from uh, Bratislava and from Romania from and me. The discussion was the following. At the university mathematics exam, what kind of problems are at different level? First semester, second level. We discussed, compared, 80% there were the same subjects. And then I introduced the question. I was leading that uh, round table and how long the students are supposed to solve this problem. The Finnish and Swedish colleagues said six hours. The Prague, Bucharest people said one hour. Then it was a, a discussion why in Norway or Finland the student is... Then we continue the discussion and they said, okay, those students who can solve the problem with, without big difficulties, in Finland, Norway, they solve in one hour. But what if a student has slower way of thinking and after six hours, and we ask it, in what percent they, they solve? They said two, three percent solve if they are using all six hours. In between the uh, six hours, there is a break, lunch break, half an hour. So they stop solving the problems, go out, drink a coffee, eat a sandwich, and come back and so on. And we ask it, and what is the professor the same? Everyone leaves the problem. So it's it's different. And the content, the mathematical content was the same. And then uh, a colleague, uh, Marie Demlova from Prague, asked them, but if the you are a student, we have to project a bridge. Do you allow him to uh, make the project in 17 years? Because in Prague, they need in half a year project. And, it, and we teach our students only this pressure of time is involving. And they said, OK, but what if a student has some difficulty? So it's, it was mathematics, all we knew each other, but there was a big huge difference in interpreting and they said the most important reason of colleagues from Nordic countries was that but at the baccalaureate they have five hours then at university level you need to put some more that's why the university exam is six hours we stopped and we could not have a join solution for the problem okay sorry for the yeah okay uh, let's uh, let's go further because time is also running quite fast uh, i recently uh, i read one report uh, uh, to a uh, related to educational system in your country in, in hungary and uh, the question uh, i was surprised it's so interesting uh, so interesting and uh, ambiguous ambiguous question what is wrong with the Hungarian education system? For example, now I, I give this question to you. <laughs> Please, shortly. What is wrong with the Hungarian education system? Is it a provocative question? <laughs> Maybe not. I, uh, in the position that I, I have uh, two answers to this question. <laughs> Nothing and all. <laughs> but 
I put the same question to a colleague, a younger colleague who was involved in these projects, and he's the director of one of these uh, secondary grammar schools. And his uh, professors, his the teacher colleagues, are very active in organizing these demonstrations. And I asked them, uh, but what they want to change in the educational system? And he said that nobody knows but the actual form is not good. So this is a wrong answer. I, I better uh, uh, remember Professor who we were discussing in St. Andrews University, some of problems. Uh, I had the great respect for him and uh, regret that I, I knew him only in this uh, late period. And he said that he was not interested in the uh, arguments of others. He took the best team and created the project for uh, how the mathematics program should be in the United Kingdom. But already Scotland did not accept that then. But he made a report for this one. That time there were uh, also political elections in the United Kingdom. And our Scottish friends, my Scottish friends, uh, did not enter in political things. And uh, this was interesting for me. I said, I saw a very interesting uh, political advertisement yesterday. The question, the advertisement said that uh, somebody is in charge to organize the football team representing the United Kingdom. One part will organize in the following level. All, all, uh, uh, substituted and parts so all all parts of the population must be uh, must be in the team the team of united kingdom will represent united kingdom so we put an old lady uh, on the left a young chap and so on and made a social uh, respect this was a, of course the advertisement of the opposite side the opposite side said that we hired the best uh, captain for organizing and he will choose the best players and that's to organize this two levels i have to tell you that when i asked their opinion they said sorry we have no opinion on this so this was the end of this uh, my political question no to uh, come back uh, there are there are of course uh, all the time there are problems with the salaries uh, they have to be uh, higher uh, i agree with with the level of salaries but you can uh, see the salaries in all countries uh, i did did not met any uh, member of a, a union who said that, oh, my salary is too high, please reduce it. <laughs> so this this is <laughs> this is a general view, even in uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, uh, the most poor, uh, uh, rich countries, and uh, in Albania, we have in our uh, network, Albanian, Northern, Macedonian, uh, uh, Bosnian partners, and they have the same problem, but a different level. Now, the content is not, not too much discussed. This was my question to this director, and I said, but what is the content you want to change? What organization? said, so nobody has idea. But yes. the present form is not. So this is, I don't know. Okay. Uh, and, um, if... and my Ooh. last, uh, po uh, because I have a lot of questions and it would be nice to, do, to discuss, but uh, again, uh, my last question in this about first part of discussion uh, uh, in relation to previous one, uh, because uh, I have found another strong, uh, another strong statement uh, in the public discourse, in the public discourse that uh, Hungarian education system is in crisis. Uh, from many aspects because of old structure and old ways of functioning. Can you shortly mention it? Is it really? 
crisis on fossil fuels? I think if there are controversial uh, discussions in in a system, that means that is how it is called uh, a very popular word. Uh, you can express your views, but if you go to uh, the publications on the internet, you will hear that in Hungary you cannot say your opinion. Now, which one is true? Because all these uh, questions are good, but my opinion is to sit down and discuss, and maybe you can find something from one part, something from the other part, but to say everything is wrong is not the basis of a fruitful discussion. So, uh, to answer your question, indeed, uh, there are uh, different uh, concepts in, in the education. Uh, I, I told you that I do not uh, agree with the ideas that uh, all the students have to be involved in these discussions. Uh, I think more, more the educators have to uh, discuss in between themselves all this. Uh, yes, and then, right. then, uh, but Peter, I have uh, just one, one, one fact I found on, on one report, European report, just, just for interest, I checked before our discussion, for example, uh, in relation to education investment <clears throat> and uh, public expenditures on education as percentage of uh, GDP, uh, for example, uh, decreased uh, from 5.5% uh, to, to 4.7% in Hungary. Uh, from, uh, in comparison from 2010 till 2020, during 10 years period, uh, percentage of GDP decreased. It's um, somehow also criterion. Oh. However, I am a mathematician and uh, I would say that I am uh, interested in numbers and figures. I uh, uh, did not read this kind of, of, uh, of questions, but uh, that could mean uh, also interpreted in another way. Let me show you how a political interpretation sounds. Then I will contradict myself. Uh, looking to that figures, uh, what is better if the GDP increases 20 percent, but the part for education decreases 0.5 percent, or to keep the same GDP and keep that higher percent for education? If you made the computings, then you end up with a result. I do not know this kind of detail. Yes, but, uh, but I, uh, I just want to add. Of, Peter, I just want to add, but, but, uh, in comparison with e European Union, yes. if the European Union, uh, let's say, average, it's more or less the same trend. For example, uh, in comparison with EU average, uh, also decreasing from 5% till 47 It means that uh, uh, at the moment, 2020, Hungary and European Union at the same level, 4.7%. I know what I know is the following that uh, in uh, about 20 years ago uh, they started the uh, former uh, left wing government uh, started a very nice project. They bought and uh, sent to the schools, even rural schools, uh, new modern, uh, what is the exact uh, name for that uh, smart. Uh, tables. So smart. there was no more black, no more smart white, board. but smart, smart board. Smart board. Smart board. Uh, and there were some rural schools. Afterwards, they realized the contradiction and finished dissolving the schools. Well, there was no uh, English toilet, English type toilet, but the pupils from rural area went. By the end, there was a wooden part where they used that. Afterwards, there was no clean water to wash hands, but they had smart board. 
<laughs> and uh, now they have more conditions, maybe less smart boards. But uh, the elementary conditions by this uh, type of, of uh, change of, of you could, could be solved somehow. Now, in this uh, last uh, 10, 12 years, in the education, there appeared some, some uh, things, some changes. For instance, uh, most of the schools have to have a physical education place. Some of the better schools, even swimming pools, just a kilometer from uh, the place where I stay, a school had the opportunity to build up a swimming pool of the school and all students can go there. They increase the number of, of uh, physical education hours. We have now each working day, so se uh, five education, physical education. I met a colleague, physician, in a conference and she said, but I don't want my, my child, my son to go to physical education. I was also absolved from physical education because I do not like to move. And my opinion is to finish this this uh, I don't know maybe she is right maybe the other part is right but uh, uh, the smart board uh, was was a problem uh, that time that time I saw also uh, even in a visiting a faculty somewhere that the smart board was used with normal things to write on yes and then that's regular it was easy to clean it because they said we have not the uh, the the technology uh, the software was not bought because the uh, it stopped that so in my opinion is better to uh, go with with uh, of course for our children the we want the best if it is possible each child must have a smart board in his place at home but step by step, uh, other conditions. Also, uh, in our schools, due to this centralization or optimization or what, whatever you call, and uh, uh, introducing this, uh, uh, have a, an increased role, uh, the Ministry of Education, this uh, local authorities leading the uh, educational system, uh, they introduced uh, some ideas which can be attacked very easy. They introduced healthier food in the schools because they said it's better to buy uh, the local food and prepare for the students some thing to eat at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning or so, instead of introducing five more automata in the school where you can buy a chocolate, where you can buy a cola and so on, but that is very modern. So there, there is a fight in between more physical education, more healthy food from local sources to help the villages around the cities to produce a healthy food and to introduce in the schools, in the menza of the schools. There is another, there are international companies I don't want to mention different names who introduce uh, coffee, uh, drinks, healthy drinks, they say healthy drinks and so on. You know, this probably is the same in all, all parts. Yeah. I was astonished in Finland to find that in their menza, for instance, the student has uh, nothing to pay for fresh vegetables and for soup because the students were this, uh, used to to have to serve a soup then it was introduced the soup is free if you buy the mess yeah. the soup yeah. is free yeah also um, some fresh fruits is free so it's it's changing the world okay, okay. maybe i answered some yeah of okay Peter, it's, it's, maybe it's, really, it's really if nice and more... not 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 stereotypical answer uh, just uh, based on your opinion and you understand it's really it's really nice uh, let's uh, turn into our second part because uh, again time is running and uh, because you are a mathematician, I am not, but uh, 
uh, at some extent uh, it's needed to know mathematics at some extent. Um, uh, if I understand the well, not only in pure mathematics, uh, we, we, we just discussed before in the, in, in the very beginning, uh, but also in math education area. And um, just a simple question, why is math education important? Yes, <laughs> I think uh, the answer is uh, given by uh, some of the former students of our university, which uh, to keep the tradition come back every 10 years. So we have uh, students who finished 20 years, 30 years, 50 years ago. Their number is decreasing, unfortunately, because the 60 years anniversary of getting the diploma, there are only a few old engineers or other specialists coming here and uh, sometimes they they confess that oh i did not catch and i did not use much of the mathematics i learned at the university then we are shocked why mathematics is but he said the way of thinking was more important so one when i could follow the lecture a good lecture could follow the reason, the mathematical, logical reasonment that helped me quite a lot in my engineering work. And that, that is the answer. So mathematics is important for, for organizing a logical, sorry. Oh, some sirena was, maybe the, there is no, some problem here. Uh, so uh, the answer is that, uh, that uh, so the logical thinking, in my opinion, can be deepened by any of the subjects. If you learn poems, that is good. If you analyze uh, uh, literature, uh, novels or other, uh, if you analyze uh, famous pictures, if you go and understand uh, how informatics work if you do chemistry or physics and you learn the deeper part of of the knowledge it's good for your thinking but most of these subjects do not help in the same uh, way deepening the logical thinking not all mathematicians think logically but uh, peter i i want i want to contradict a little bit uh, uh, nowadays, it's uh, you, you see uh, also discourse. Uh, just we need to develop critical thinking, to think critically. Why do we need logical thinking? Critical thinking is more important, the most important. <laughs> uh, uh, to answer you, it's a very simple problem because critical thinking is based on logical thinking. You cannot. Uh, criticize something if uh, you are missing the logic because it's easy to contradict you. If you have a good logic, sometimes uh, our students in, in law faculty, uh, they they make this kind of uh, competitions to keep a discourse uh, uh, to prove one idea, then change role and then keep a discourse to say against. And this is good for, for developing the logical thinking and then it's upon the the content if they uh, defend a, a good case or not quotation sign so uh, the contradiction contradicting or uh, is also based on uh, yes uh, in logical Lutania, in Lutania we have uh, 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 why is continuous discussion on math teaching uh, level? Uh, for example, for some last years, the uh, poor math results are extremely worrying. And uh, I, I do not know in details, but for example, yesterday it was announced that our Ministry of Education uh, introduced some plan, something like a plan, like a strategy uh, related to improvement of mathematics teaching, how to improve. Uh, because, for example, uh, our results uh, have been consistently deteriorating for a long time, 
and uh, for example uh, around 35 percent of uh, uh, did not reach a satisfactory level uh, if, if, for example for that understanding approximately from more than 15,000 holders who, who uh, took part in the exam. Uh, it means that did not pass the mathematics exam. Uh, what is, let's say, situation in Hungary? Uh, my answer could be similar, but uh, in my opinion, this is uh, not, not the point. Because, as I said previously, if you deepen your knowledge in any area, mathematics, non-mathematics, linguistics, learning foreign languages, your intellect will, will develop. And I met students who were fond of chemics, but they hated mathematics. And when they entered deeper in chemistry, they found that they need to learn good mathematics to understand their chemistry problems. In my opinion, the uh, level of, of uh, uh, general knowledge of our students in the last 20, 10 years, whatever period you want to analyze, is not decreasing. Yeah. Either in mathematics or it's changing. So, uh, and adapting to the, the conditions. If you look to a mobile phone or a tablet or something, you will see this kind of clip type information. Just for one second, you have an information and you have to formulate your ideas from this. 50 years ago, 40 years ago, when my teachers were students, they believed in lecturing two hours developing slowly, logically, and we learn it. And some of us, maybe sometimes me too, I am uh, believing that it's good to have such a long, logical discussion, proving something mathematics. But I am not convinced that this is the best way to, to deepen the knowledge. If you can abstract from two second clip something which is crucial for your studies, then it's also, but I am too old to change my views on, on uh, how to teach mathematics. I always had a problem that if I saw somebody not understanding something, a simple mathematical, logical something question, I try to go behind him and see from his point of view what is he did not catch there. And sometimes is based on lack of, of knowing some elementary computations. Other type is it's everybody is doing so. Give you a simple example. Uh, for those who do not uh, who believe in computers, in laptops, in pocket calculators, I ask them frequently what is one third plus two third. They say, of course, one. I say, and your student who is using calculator, pocket calculator, we answer you 0 0.99 because one third is 0 0.33, two thirds is 0 0.66. They add the two, believe 0 0.99. Is this such true answer or not? This is a true answer because if you order in a building industry, 1.99 tons of cement that will give you whole ton of cement it's not nine so 0 0.99 was a good answer for for the question <laughs> uh, when we were students back about uh, 50 40 years we had in in the mensa not mensa in the uh, student hostel we had engineering students beside and one night around two o'clock, they were doing their projects with logarithmic ruler for young people. It says nothing, this logarithmic ruler, but uh, they, they were doing, there were no pocket calculators that time. And we, we wake it up with a laughing uh, team of engineering students. And they said, what, what happened? Why you are so happy? They said, by the logarithmic ruler, 
somebody put two times three and the other was working only with the logarithmic ruler, two times three is 4.01 because on the logarithmic ruler, if you move a bit the ruler, then it's uh, showing uh, this is the answer. So some of them has to memorize two times three, others compute with no with any kind of smartphone or something, but the answer must be sure, exact, and so on. So education is changing. The students' knowledge level has not decreased, has changed. But we all teachers like me and maybe others, we have to adopt this idea that their way of understanding is changing. If you give them a good idea, then they get one. Uh, an example from my teaching, uh, uh, I tell to the students uh, which which is better of two watches. I have a wristwatch which is completely broken and another which is in advance one minute each day. Of course, that is in advance with one minute. It's You can compute after a week, it has seven minutes in advance so you can use that broken you cannot use if you put that question to a computer any smart computer will answer that broken is better because it shows twice a day the exact time the other only every 10 years will show the exact time <laughs> now which one the answer which one is the right answer yes okay um <coughs> it's interesting. And uh, uh, the mathematics upper secondary school maturity exam uh, generally is mandatory in Lithuania. Uh, what about your country? Yes, except maybe some schools, uh, mathematics, uh, not a language that is Hungarian, but we have also German language schools yeah. and uh, Slovak language schools, etc. But in generally, Hungarian language and literature, mathematics, and uh, physics in some schools. But physics already can be changed it to another, and also history. There are two basic compulsory exams. I'll just ask the uh, colleagues from the secondary. Uh, grammar school what is the situation and then they can change to uh, can have two more subjects the system in hungary is that if you make the baccalaureate the maturity exam in your school this exam is taken uh, in consideration to enter the faculty 20 30 years ago it was a separate entry exam so after a month two months they finished the maturity, they had to have an exam in the subjects given by the university. Now, their high school results, the last two years high school results, some of the subjects is computed, then the exam for the maturity is computed. And as I mentioned before, some of the schools, some of the universities can put different conditions, results at the specialty competitions or knowledge, uh, language knowledge, like one or two foreign language exams can can uh, increase the points that the student can enter the faculty. Did I answer your question? Yes, yes. Um, uh, uh, just uh, I, uh, I want to also mention because uh, I was not directly involved, but uh, uh, okay, already last year at the end of um, September, officially we finished our one Erasmus Plus project. It was connected also with mathematics, not only with science, science and mathematics. It's Bridge, Bridge to Teach, acronym is Bridge to Teach, uh, developing bridging courses for mathematics and <clears throat> science teacher students. It was coordinated by University of Vienna in Austria, Faculty of Mathematics. And uh, uh, one of the main uh, idea was to prepare so-called bridging courses for uh, pre-service mathematics and science teachers, and mainly who entered uh, recently in university, for example, three, uh, first year 
stu university students. And uh, I was surprised that in many countries, uh, uh, in this project, uh, by the way, it was involved uh, Austria, Lithuania, Czechia, Italy, um, Slovakia, and uh, in previous uh, part uh, also United Kingdom, but uh, in this project, uh, they were, uh, was, uh, UK was not included. Uh, and um, oh, so different level, so different level of preparedness uh, of entering students. They so diverse, uh, having in mind uh, uh, math background, etc., etc. And idea is to connect somehow to help them um, to reach appropriate level what is required at university, for example, in math and also in science. Obviously, it's it's possible more difficult in science because we have at least three main area: physics, chemistry, and biology. And uh, my, for example, uh, my team was responsible mainly for for science and in particular for physics and, and chemistry part. And we worked together with Czech colleagues and Slovakian colleagues. Uh, I will put the link to, to the description of our uh, discussion uh, later on. But uh, do you have, for example, something similar at your university like uh, like bridging courses? Uh, just uh, I had a phone call I had to answer uh, about this uh, subject. We have in Sefi also this, this subject of uh, equalizing the level of, of uh, first year students. It is a very difficult problem. We had different uh, different experiments even in these SEFI meetings from United Loughborough University, then uh, other uni Bristol University, we had colleagues dealing with this from uh, France, from Spain, Finland, Sweden, Czech Republic, Romania, Bulgaria, Austria. But uh, we could not uh, say that this is the best way to any of the methods. So there are uh, attempts to measure the knowledge of the entering students, mathematics, physics, etc., and to ask them to finish some in some kind, say, mathematics zero course, which is the entering the same level. But the disadvantage of this kind of of things, I will tell you other solutions as well. This kind of thing uh, is uh, that. We need to uh, put more stress over the students, which are the more stressed. Because those students who have lack of knowledge, if you put from physics, mathematics, language, some extra courses, then they have no more time to learn just to follow these courses because it's a prescription. If you do not obtain a 60, percent in mathematics zero you cannot take mathematics one two and so on this type of, of question so it is increasing the level so we got no solution for these extra courses i remember in bristol and also loveborough loveborough is the open university uh, type education they try to create a so-called mathematics excellence center where uh, higher year students, young uh, teaching assistants offered uh, courses or just uh, help for students fighting with, with first year subjects, understanding the basic notions, they had them like individual consultation. Also the same problem that uh, the students who lack uh, knowledge, they have uh, they, their uh, speed of understanding and deepening their knowledge is very reduced. So uh, there was a third uh, system which we also experimented in some of the partner countries also in Hungary to introduce some uh, some courses. It is a way of, of uh, like in the Formula One uh, uh, racing uh, street 
side street to change the wheels, but we do not uh, call it side street, uh, to not to lose the exams of the first year students. They can do some exams, but in mathematics or physics they fail. And to introduce uh, them in the so-called uh, engineering assistant level of teaching. So not to lose those students for higher uh, university, to get a, uh, it's called sub-engineering, if this term is can be used, a diploma. So it is not an engineering diploma, but is in between a good technician. Uh, and in, in this ideas we said, or those who were arguing for this, they said that this assistance will make the connection between the engineers. The engineer will say something very scientific. The everyday worker cannot understand them. So this assistance will connect them. This was not so popular for students. They wanted uh, to have a higher level diploma. They fight it. Uh, this credit system, uh, Bologna system, is uh, also presenting some difficulties because uh, in some universities adopting this uh, Bologna system, they allow the student to have uh, many credits accumulated from side courses, not the main courses. And then it is the diploma semester and has not got the mathematics one or two exam or the compulsory uh, exam, which is a final uh, higher scored exam in some, some education system. So it's it's no answer for, for that. Probably uh, the case is that uh, the students have to be uh, oriented much earlier from the secondary schools, secondary grammar school, vocational schools, uh, and uh, say to them that we recommend you better to choose this kind of education, which is at your level, you can progress, but not that. But that is also discrimination and so on. So it's... Uh, it's um, and some of the students can can uh, maturize in some years. So after two or three years, they look to the university studies as most more valuable studies, and then they. But it's it's uh, no answer. So you asking me about the lack of knowledge in science uh, subjects, generally is is the same. And uh, you mentioned physics. Physics is also a problem. And uh, we uh, need more teachers, not only mathematics. In mathematics, we are rather good, but in physics, is uh, very difficult. Uh, there are 30 places for physics at the uh, best universities, and only 20, 25 students will choose that because it's uh, difficult to face all the subjects there. So they. And another uh, subject, which uh, I do not know if it's right time to mention, that most of, of our students are fun of, uh, I are uh, familiarized from early years with informatics. So for them, it's no problem to move a computer, to rebuild the system, to make something. But they refuse to go to find a diploma. After 10 years, they come back. I, am, I work it as informatician. After I finished the first year, I had uh, one semester, two semesters completed. I was informatician for 10 years at a company, but I, I need more. And now I come back uh, in the uh, adult education forms to finish my studies because I need the diploma for promotion, but not too many. Many of them, excellent, brilliant student is lost because, because of this uh, demand from the part of, of industry. There is a, a big need of informaticians. If you can do a web page, then you are excellent. Come here, you have twice as much salary in the starting sure. years as an engineer will have. Why to study three, four, five years more? And in that five years, you already have your own car, you are a 
informatician, good prepared. But when something is changed, or after 20 years, the informatic passes in a higher level, other level is not so easy to find them. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what is the situation in Lithuania. Probably yes. the same. Probably, yes. Uh, and uh, our last uh, part uh, shortly, because as far as I know, you are deeply involved in, in, in CIPUS or, or how to pronounce in the right way, network. Yes, uh, totally. Can you shortly can you shortly introduce, present this network? It, it would be interesting for our viewers. Shortly is a, I know, but... a very difficult question for me. Okay, so I mentioned the political changes uh, in the years 90. This uh, Eastern Central European system of former communist bloc has uh, been destroyed, dissolved, finished. It's a good thing. We can go exchange views and so on. And uh, with that, uh, all the academic exchange programs in between the universities, university teachers, academicians and so on, was simply thrown away. We do not have the academy in Bulgaria in good relations with the academy in Slovakia to send. And then uh, one, one Western country, I could say Central European country, Austria, uh, introduced and uh, the founding members were uh, countries around Austria. So Hungary, uh, Slovakia, Czech Republic, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Poland, they they entered a nice project. This CIPUS, uh, Mosaic World, is Central European Exchange Program for University Studies and has a very simple structure. It is in function from 94-95 and I am the leader of a network since uh, 2000, so very early. has a very simple structure. All these CIPUS countries, now there are 15 countries plus Kosovo. Why I say so? Because Romania and other countries, Serbia, do not accept Kosovo being a country, just a territory. Let's skip the political part. So we are 16 partner territories, countries. And once a year, the ministers of these countries meet in one of the countries, which is the leader for CIPUS project that year, is changing each two years or so, round, <coughs> they meet, they discuss the problems of education, higher education, and they offer. For instance, Austria says, I offer 1,000 incoming grants. This means teacher and student grants to Austria. Then Slovakia says, I offer 4,000 or 2,000 or 1,000. So each country, according to the budget, offers a number of we as network coordinators we uh, create thematic networks mine is active methods in teaching mathematics and informatics teaching and learning mathematics and informatics and others are in language sciences in historical sciences engineering etc each year about 80 90 such networks bigger or smaller networks are working so Ministries offer incoming uh, uh, mobility months. This is the term. The single currency in CIPUS is mobility months. We do not measure in leva or euro or Hungarian foreign or uh, Polish uh, currency. We measure in incoming months. And the networks share this get. For instance, my network last year had about 250, 300 mobility months. And then we share who wants to send a teacher, a student to one of the partners. And we use this, but it's a fight every year. You have to get a renewal. If you are not good enough, then you are on the uh, so-called uh, umbrella universities which get no support they are waiting one year but this this works it's just like erasmus we need the same rules as erasmus but in erasmus 
the European Union sends the money to the sending university, the student or teacher get the Erasmus grant and goes to the financial load is on the sending university. And also the, the uh, checking that this student was there, indeed studied and so on. In Sipus is opposite, the host university will Mobilities for students are the normal mobilities, three, four months, but up to 10 months. So one semester with exams or two semesters, that is the so-called normal student run. For diploma workers or PhD students, there is a short stay, one month, two months stay. And for teachers with teaching load differs from country to country. Some countries offer for at least five uh, stays each each week you have to perform with six uh, offer six hours lectures like in Erasmus and uh, in some countries it is uh, in uh, in uh, slots of ten, up to 10 days up to 20 days in others five days others uh, number of lectures so it's different the, the teacher grant so that's all simple. It's very simple. Everything is on, on the internet. So it is a very useful. And our network was and is member of this CIPUS network King, since 2000. So we are in the 23rd year of existence of the network. We were twice uh, awarded the ministerial prize for the best network in uh, 2006 and in 2013. Ljubljana respectively mean and uh, this award is given to only one network for at least three or four year performance analyzing the performance of the network it one year one grant is given and it started in 2002 2004 or so so we were among the first three four universities also this is the sunny side of the CIPUS also, because of lack of, of uh, sufficient initiatives, we had two years of waiting list status. So we, in these 23 years, in fact, we were 21 years active, we were twice awarded the ministerial prize. For me, it's uh, very important because uh, it's a huge family, the Sipus family. I have uh, Sipus grandsons in Bulgaria, I remember Sipus student marriages and unfortunately the black side of the we lose sometimes colleagues very good colleagues in Prague in uh, Russe in uh, just a last loss was in Budapest a colleague and due to covid we had no information I sent her emails and she did not answer. I sent her emails. She did not answer. I called the faculty and they said, sorry, she is not alive anymore. So we yeah. have in Serbia very good friends. But we organize the students come, the students keep in touch. You cannot be become rich of SIPUS because the grant is a so-called uh, uh, tailored to the needs of the given country. So the grant in Austria is 1,100 euro for a month. And that the same grant in Bulgaria is uh, 200 leva, which is around 100 euro. So it differs from country to yes, country, so it's, it's, from it's, possibilities it's, of the country. But in, yeah. if you go to Bulgaria, they offer you free accommodation, in the student mensa, you eat very good for some one to leva, and you can live there. So the living conditions in Austria, you pay 50 euro per night for accommodation. So your grant seems to be high, but also the conditions are different. Okay, uh, it's really interesting. And uh, uh, again, I will put a link uh, to this network. Uh, uh, in relation to our video and then the possible some people who are interested uh, can, can find more information, they'll be able to find more information. 
Uh, okay, and our time is approaching to an end. Uh, it's obvious that uh, and understandable that it's not possible to discuss everything uh, and uh, in more details uh, because a lot of different um, different aspects, different issues, etc. Interesting, but uh, I hope that uh, it will be possible to to have such discussions or, or similar discussion uh, maybe in the future. Uh, Peter, uh, please. Uh, what was not said or what was not discussed at the last moment? What you what, uh, want to add at the end? L like a summary. The last subject was uh, about CIPUS and just a positive outcome of the CIPUS is this discussion. We met at a CIPUS partner, Anna Klim Klimaszewska from Szlice is one of our best CIPUS partners there. She organizes conferences. I meet people from not only from CIPUS countries, but from others. So this discussion could not happen if our CIPUS network was not so active. Yes. Thank you. You are absolutely right, because <laughs> otherwise possible, uh, yeah. It was not possible to organize this discussion, and uh, 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 obviously we met many years ago in in, in Poland in Siedlce, a very nice conference. And uh, as far as I know, the, the conference uh, this uh, this year also Anna is going to organize this conference, uh, mean possible in beginning of June, and obviously uh, I am planning to attend it uh, again uh, as every year. Uh, only uh, possible only one year or two years uh, during uh, due to COVID oh, pandemic. Yes. It, uh, uh, I, uh, I presented online, but uh, last year uh, I visited in June. It was really nice again to meet mainly the same people uh, uh, and 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 to, to have uh, so wonderful wonderful time in Poland. Uh, possible, uh, I visited uh, some, sometimes I visited also Hungary, I know Hungary, uh, and, and uh, possible, uh, at some time I will visit your university, your city, your nice city, possible, mm -hmm. if you, <laughs> nobody knows, uh, unpredictable life, anyway. Uh, you thank you very I had a colleague. I had a colleague from, uh, he's not alive anymore, from Ljubljana, and he asked me, why do you do this networking? What the university pays you for doing this job? I said, nothing. Then, why do you do that? The answer was here. If you multiply our relation and this interview and the outcomes with 72, you know why I was doing this networking and why I want to continue with colleagues. I need young colleagues to be involved. Yes, obviously, because the uh, cooperation uh, and communication among uh, scientists, among scholars, uh, it's really very important and fruitful. You can establish uh, uh, different contacts. Uh, based on that, you can um, uh, initiate different projects, for example, common activities. Uh, it, it's it's obviously useful and uh, and uh, without any doubts. Okay, Peter, uh, I want to uh, say um, many thanks, big thanks to you uh, that you agreed to take part in our online discussion. Uh, and uh, it's uh, and at the same time, I hope that. Uh, uh, it will be somehow useful for uh, for our viewers, possible later, etc., uh, etc., et and uh, uh, possible uh, some some ideas, some insights will be also initiated. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, I wish you big thank success you in your in your academic life, in your personal life, and in your future career at some extent in your activities and in your area of interest, scientific interest, etc. Thank you and uh, we are closing this discussion. The same, the same I wish you and thank you for finding me with this interview.